Hey, what's up? Mike Sunday here. Been putting this off for a while. Been um, resisting the fashion content only because when I first started my Instagram, I think that's kind of really how I initially got my following, um, as small as that is. So trying to branch out from that, but people have been asking about uh, you know some of the fall accessories I've been rocking, some of the stuff I've been rocking over the summer. So wanted to do a video. Um, and you know what, I, I actually like watching fashion YouTubers quite a bit. So hopefully I can kind of live up to their um, to their legacy. This is a little intro to the Mike Sunday fashion content. Going to be going over some of the accessories I've been rocking a lot over the, the summer, stuff I've picked up over the summer, as well as um, some of the outerwear that I copped recently. I've been looking forward to fall, starting to finally get cool here in Toronto, finally start dressing. So expect some fits, we can break those down. I'm gonna start by talking about the accessories first and how I might rock them, have some B-roll, have some close-ups, and then we'll do some fits, what I might be rocking this fall. So, uh, when it comes to accessories, I think the first thing I'll talk about is this right here, it's a watch. So if you've been um, if you've been following me on Instagram for the last little bit, you know that I've been starting to get into watches quite heavily. I I've never was really a huge watch person per se, but the the idea of it being an extension of your design or your aesthetic, I should say, and your fashion philosophy has really resonated with me and. Treating watches more like jewelry, I've always been a big jewelry fan. Um, that's kind of an idea that's really uh, stuck out to me. So this first thing, um, or this first serious watch that I've copped since I've started to get into watches is the Tudor Black Bay 54. And if you know anything about watches, it created quite a buzz this year, uh, quite a big following in the community. Um, namely because when everyone seems to be going in the bigger case sizes or the bigger uh, diameter for the actual face itself, Tudor went ahead and made a smaller dive watch. This is true to sort of a vintage style Rolex Submariner. It's 37 millimeters. I don't have a, the biggest wrist, so it wears quite nicely. Um, but what I do like is that it kind of has that neo vintage feel. They've used some gilt accents on the face, uh, but at the same time, it's done some things, in my opinion, much better than its predecessor, the Tudor 58. So it doesn't have the hash marks. Um, it has silver markings on the dial. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> silver markings on the dial as opposed to sort of these pseudo gold ones that the 58 had. So I think that's a lot nicer. Um, and yeah, I think just the case size is magical. Works really well. Uh, been rocking this all summer and can't wait to go traveling with it because it is a great piece. Um, and we'll be talking about sort of how I rock it later. One of the cool things, um, you know, I was talking to uh, some friends and watches have been great because I've had such amazing conversations with people, people that I never thought I would have a, be having these types of conversations with. And I think when you dress avant-garde or in my case, you know, dress a little bit crazier, people are surprised that my watch taste is so um, traditional or conservative. But I, to me, I think that's kind of where the magic happens. And when you juxtapose the dressiness of like a, a very classic style watch with more avant-garde or dressed down um, fashion, that's where to me it actually feels a lot more interesting than just having like, uh, like, wearing a dress watch with a suit or like wearing a very casual watch with a um, like a hoodie and a t-shirt. To me, the interest comes in the contrast. It's kind of like, I mean, it's a bad example, but when, when you're wearing a suit and you kind of have like fun socks or something, it, it kind of shows a little bit of your personality. Similarly, when I'm wearing leather on the street, having a very nice traditional um, watch with uh, 
heritage to me is very appealing. I love the contrast. Second accessory, very simply put, has been this um, ball choker from Hatton Labs. I got it on sale at Essence. I've always loved this style from the sort of 90s Y2K aesthetic. I used to have one that was nickel plated, I believe. The reason why I was attracted to this one is because it's actually made of sterling silver. Um, it's pretty good. I wish it was, I have a pretty thick neck, so I wish it was about an inch longer, but it's been great. Um, always love kind of that, uh, that Y2K style and blending it kind of with more tailored or more um, sophisticated garments, I might add. So that's been a really nice pickup, really simple. We can see how we can, uh, how I've been styling that with some, some fits. After that, um, I've been going super hard on the keychain accessories lately. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'll be um, doing some B-roll, but the reason why is because, uh, you know, originally I had saw this undercover keychain piece from Acronym. They had styled it with one of their pieces and it kind of totally reignited my love for Japanese cell phone charm culture from the late 90s, early 2000s. If you know what I'm talking about, you know how cool that stuff was. And I'm always looking for ways to express my love for anime and just have a little bit more flavor. So stuff like this has been really fun. Um, some, of the, some of the accessories include like Miffy, uh, Near Automata, Chainsaw Man, Hello Kitty. And I even went ahead and made my own charm for Sound Voltex, which if, you see, if you've seen my previous video is a beat or a rhythm game that I really like. So I even went ahead and made my own charm. So um, show you how I've been rocking these. This one I generally just put on my pants and then this one I'll put on a bag or something. So charms been a major part of the aesthetic lately. Just thinking about how I can upgrade the accessory game and have some more fun with, with some anime. Um, after that is After that is this hat, this green hat. I love hats, um, love baseball caps, have hard time finding ones that fit my head because I have a big head. This one fits pretty well. It's by a company called Beautiful. Um, lately, I've been trying to step away from rocking so much color. I think I was definitely in my colorful stage during the pandemic, but getting back to the roots, going back to all black, a little bit more tonal and material explorations. But when I do have an accessory like this, this is like a lime highlighter green, I think it, works really well with the all black. I love to just have that crazy neon pop of color. So that works really well. This is a baseball cap by Beautiful. We'll be rocking that in the fits as well. Um, and I think finally for the accessories, one thing that I've really loved is this, um, these glasses from Balenciaga. You know, there's a pattern here, got a huge head, got a big fucking head, have a really hard time finding glasses that fit. These fit amazing. I cannot believe it. They're so wide, they're so cartoony, and of course, going in theme with that, um, the same thing, thought as the neon. They're bright orange, they really stand out, and the, just the, um, the lenses are really cool. It has that sort of anime cartoon uh, flair that I love to mix in with my outfits. It's super fun. They're a showstopper. People love trying them on. They are hilarious. Balenciaga glasses. I think I was first made aware of these. My friend Leslie, her boyfriend, I think were, were, was rocking them on her story. So shout out Les. Um, and yeah, just these, uh, they've been super fun. I even wanna get another, I wanna get the black version of these just because they're so versatile. I have such a hard time fitting my head. So Balenci, Balenci glasses, hit or miss, but these ones really work for me. I think they're called the, uh, either the 90s glass or I don't know exactly what the name is, but we will, um, we'll be rocking these, we'll be rocking these. Okay, so I know these aren't accessories, but wanted to highlight these as well. This is the three pack of what they're calling the membrane tea from Somar. Somar is a company started by a fashion YouTuber named Owen, I believe. And yeah, I discovered his content. I really liked how he dressed. And I, um, I was looking into the brand, the quality seemed pretty good and the price point was, was great. So cop this three pack of teas, loved how cropped these are. These are a small, 
Um, I'm 5'8", and they fit perfectly. Um, just, they've been really great uh, because I either throw a long sleeve underneath and I can get that look, which is kind of that grungy, especially too, if, if you have some of these darker ones with like a darker long sleeve or even a lighter long sleeve, really been liking that. Um, or you can just rock them as is. So it's almost like you can get like six <laughs> looks out of these, uh, this three pack. So if they ever restock, Somar, want to grab another because they're great been running them into the ground using them for the gym just getting them really beat up they have this really nice pre-distressed um kind of action on the side so as they as i start to wash them more dry them out more hopefully they'll distress and yeah really looking forward to just seeing how these age because i've really been enjoying them the somar membrane tea perfectly cropped nice and boxy just the way i like it helps sort of extend the legs because i'm obviously not the tallest so it's not overly cropped um sort of how all these fashion tiktokers are doing it but for me it's sort of the perfect crop there and it works really really well um, and I'll be sure to highlight some of the details and how I've been rocking it with the fits okay coming back in with the cropped again this is the Kiko Kostatinov um, Meno or Mino jacket not sure the pronunciation there uh, this to me was one of the standouts from his uh, fall winter collection. It's a really nice crop, has a military vibe, some really, really awesome details. Um, I'm going to highlight some of the buttons here. Just a really interesting sort of crescent shape on there and just the way the actual jacket itself buttons up is really nice. I've been a fan of Kiko for a long time, but haven't really owned too much. I'm a huge, huge fan of Kiko's pants and trouser wear, but just the way my body's shaped, the, the waist never really matches the length. So whatever waist I need, it ends up being either way too long. And because his tailoring is so sophisticated, it's not really something easily tailorable. So I've unfortunately had to shy away. When I did see this jacket, um, I had to jump on it. It's really cool. I know some other YouTubers have highlighted it as well. I think it was a bit of a standout for the season. Uh, black, got it in classic black. The hardware is really great. The material's okay. It's a very light jacket. I think it's a great layering piece and perfect for fall. Um, I will say, I, I think the quality of Kiko has fallen a little bit in the last couple of years uh, or seasons, especially when I compare it to my friend Brian's pieces from much earlier in Kiko's career. That stuff was amazing. That being said, the patterns are fantastic. This is a, you can even adjust the sleeve, which is really, really cool. So you can slim it out if you want. I've cinched it slightly at the waist, but to me, this is um, vintage Kiko. I love the cut. It's just totally fascinating. Elongated arms, military sort of crop, really, really easy to rock, really easy to throw on. I can't wait to travel it with this. So this is the Kiko Kostantinov cropped meno jacket from this season. Okay, and the final piece I'm gonna highlight is this R Legacy shrunken mini leather jacket. It is a beast. It is the conversation piece of the season for me, at least in my friend group. Everyone's been talking about it. All my homies have tried it on. It is so stiff, and when I first got it, it was so uncomfortable, I could barely move my arms. Um, but what I really love about it is the collar, the simplicity, the serious zipper. It's a Lambo zipper, and look at it, how it just holds its shape. It's totally reminiscent of CCP, um, and just how stiff uh, those jackets can be, but it's starting to break in. I've worn it for, like three or four weeks straight. It's starting to finally loosen up. It's feeling great. And it has this amazing rich scent about it. I know it sounds strange, but if you've tried on this Our Legacy jacket, you'll know what I'm talking about. And to me, it's just the quintessential leather jacket. It's something that I feel is grown, that I can age with, um, bring it into my late 30s, early 40s, and beyond. Something that I can um, truly, truly wear for a very long time. It's The cut isn't super avant-garde, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's still all about the details. 
Uh, underneath the collar has a really nice corduroy sort of lining. Actually, it's the same material that's in the pocket as well. So it just feels really luxurious. It definitely was not a cheap piece, but at the same time, I think that the value speaks for itself. I've been wearing it constantly, nonstop, totally windproof. I'm totally obsessed with this. It's a great piece. If you can still get it or if it manages to hit sale, because I know markdowns are already starting to happen, I would highly recommend you looking into this. I got a 48. It's slightly big in the shoulders, but a 46 would have been too tight. I like that I can put a sweater underneath it. I'm 5'8", 165 ish, and the 48 fits me right about right. I think the 46 would have been too small. The 50 obviously would have been too big. So this is the um, Our Legacy mini leather jacket. I think it's the jacket of the season. Our Legacy has been absolutely killing it lately. I'm totally obsessed. Our Legacy was off my radar for quite a long time, but because of the help of my friends and just with all the fire they've been dropping, it's irresistible. I love what our legacy's been doing. It's been fantastic. Go check it out. Stuff's really, really fire. Um, and yeah, let's get into some fits, how I'm actually gonna be rocking these pieces this fall. Um, and you can see kind of how the accessories play off. This really minimal um, textural, tonal, silhouette focused fit uh, and how they kind of add a bit of fun with my anime inspiration, taste, and just a pop of color. Okay, so for this first fit, it's pretty pedestrian. Um, I posted the hat combo on my Instagram one time and people said I look like Timo. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the League of Legends character. He has like a green hat with orange goggles, which is hilarious. Uh, rocking the Happy 99 zip up hoodie. If you had told me I'd be rocking zip ups again three years ago, I would have said you're nuts, but here we are. Uh, have the necklace peeking through there, which is super nice. The chunky jewelry. Always been more of a fan of silver jewelry as opposed to gold. Just agrees with my skin tone better. Um, with the rings, etc. And yeah, you can see the keychain dangling there. Kind of fun on the Levi's 517s. They're not vintage or anything. I actually feel like the modern Levi's don't really fade super nice. Tailored these. Uh, but they're just a good everyday jean because they kind of have a flare at the leg. And on the feet are Rick Owens Geo Baskets. I think these are my oldest pair of designer shoes. Rick Owens, always so much love for him. Second fit here, we got the big boy leather jacket on, our legacy. Um, yeah, I just love how neutral this jacket is. It's it's very kind of plain, I think, if you, if you really think about it. But the collar is nice. It's a flattering cut. It's boxy. It's a little cropped, uh, but not super cropped on me. I think if you're a little bit taller and rocking more of those Japanese keychains on the Rick Owens bag right there. You can see I kept the 517s on and then paired it with the Guidi back zips on the feet just to sort of give like a full leather look. So this is something that I might rock in um, the fall on the cooler day. Just some luxurious materials to take me through the colder weather. All black, it's nice. And uh, yeah, paired it with a white t-shirt just to have a little bit of contrast. Super, super basic fit, but this is something that I might throw on on the weekend, Saturday, late afternoon, go out, meet people for drinks. Super casual uh, outfit. Here we go, fit three, kind of a raver, I guess, inspired fit. You can see the Somar T here. 
with the uh, long sleeve underneath. I just really love how these tees fit. They're super boxy. The sleeves are wide, really, really fun. Great for throwing one under. And of course, got the, the glasses on top, which I think has that neon, just jumps at you, especially when you're rocking all black. Got the keychains again. So uh, yeah, Balenciaga sunglasses, Somar Crop T have the Bounty Hunter Supreme Monster backpack on for kind of that fun furry vibe. And on the legs are acronym cargo pants with the Bottega Veneta super chunky tire joints. So yeah, just uh, kind of like a rave inspired fit going out nighttime warrior. It's a good one. Most likely would throw a jacket on top of this as well. Okay, so fit number four, Denim Cowboy, got the neon hat again on top there. The parka is Raph Simmons, I think, fall, winter, 16 or 17. On the back it says, anyway, out of this nightmare. I just find the message very poignant, especially as we continue down this destructive path <laughs> in humanity. But anyway, I digress. Um, the jacket I'm wearing, under the parka is a vintage Levi's orange tab uh, type one, I want to say. So it doesn't have pockets, but it's a great denim jacket. It fits fantastic. The fading is great. Uh, vintage Levi's again on the leg. So just some nice denim contrast with the dark parka on top. The Rick Owens bag once again with the, uh, the keychains and our legacy loafers on the foot. So. An office fit, kind of like a really nice strolling through <laughs> the university campus type of fit. Okay, and for the final fit, we got the very kind of classic Mike Sunday look, I guess. Been rocking something like this very often. Um, yeah, the Menno jacket. You can just see how military inspired it is. Love all the details, love all the fixtures. And yeah, I think it's just flattering for my body shape having the cropped jacket since I'm not super tall. You can see here layered with one of the Somar tees another tee underneath just to give it a little bit of visual interest and on the legs i'm rocking vintage wrangler they're sort of a poly pant uh, they kind of have like a disco fit they're super high-waisted with a flare which is really nice and tying it off with the military vibe the balenciaga Ser sergeant derbies they're super clowny big big shoe Really love how exaggerated the silhouette is, and of course the chain as well. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. My first sort of fashion content video. If this is something you wanna see more of, please leave a comment. I'd be happy to create that for y'all. But until next time, this was my Fall Fits and Accessories video.